These are scenes that we cut out of the movie. That's right. Why did we cut them out of the movie? Because it had to be a reasonable running length. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like storyboarding for me is like rehearsing something. It's like putting it up on the stage and, and having things go out and, and you, you, it very quickly becomes apparent what needs to be changed and what needs to be boosted. And um, uh, I write certain things to be elaborated on. Like, like the final battle, I, I didn't even make an attempt. <laughs> There were certain things that needed to be hit, but I knew that it was gonna change so many times because those sequences are wild and crazy, and it's the kind of thing where you wanna let story and a lot of people come in and throw their ideas around and, and then try to shape it. There are other sequences, like 100 Mile Dash, where I wrote every single thing that happened because I had the structure very clearly in mind. And then there were other ones that were kind of halfway, like Helen sneaking into the base, right. where certain things needed to happen, and certain parts of it I had very clear, but other parts we kind of built into it as we got in and explored it. And these are primarily ideas that are visual in nature, and I think that if you just pin it down to um, writing, you're limiting it too much. So it's the kind of thing that I think it, it would be analogous in a live action film that you would develop on the set. Mm -hmm. that you would see how somebody's walking and you'd say, try this over here, why don't you pick this up on that line? And the cinematographer says, hey, why don't, we could have a great shot here, you know. So it, it kind of varied throughout the film, but because um, a lot of my training is in animation, I think I know, I have it in mind where I want to extemporize and where I want to uh, just figure it out in advance. Our original opening that went into boarding was not the way that I always pitched it. It was this idea that you saw the family first uh, um, as people and then kind of gradually revealed that they were superheroes. So we started this thing at what we thought was a good uh, American kind of way to start it, and that's him getting to know the neighbors at a neighborhood barbecue. Young married couple, new right. in the neighborhood. Right, and they're making jokes, trying to fit in, and uh, someone says something to Helen. A commodities broker, that sounds intriguing. Well, it can be quite a challenge, but I gotta be honest, I eat it for breakfast. And what do you do, Helen? I'm a homemaker. This is based on a thing that my wife has had to go through. She worked in film editing, and when we first had our kids, there was a decision about whether or not she should continue working because she made good money. And I said, look, as long as we can bring in enough money, it would be great to have the kids have a mother around all the time. And we made it work. But one thing that she noticed was that when you're talking about work, everyone could connect with that. Everyone got it. Everyone you know, hey, you're another fellow working person, isn't it, you know, this difficult and all that. Once she said that she, you know, was a mother or that she worked in the house, their eyes glazed over and they kind of dismissed what she did. Throw away my prime years, trailing after a bunch of snotty kids. No, thank you. Hello, no thanks. Hello, I want to do something with my life. Wait a minute. You consider raising a family nothing? I love the idea of a superhero defending, you know, mo being a mom. Being a mom. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I missed, I kind of, I like that moment, and I'm, I'm sorry that we don't have something like that in the movie. The first time we realize these people aren't normal people is when he gets distracted by the argument Helen's having about motherhood and a professional life, and Bob chops off his own fingers. <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is, is if you are invulnerable, relatively invulnerable, and you have to pretend anybody catches you being invulnerable, then you've got to go through a tremendous amount of, of problems to try to convince the world that you're not invulnerable. Right. And you have to pretend like you're injured when you're not. And I, I just thought there's another side to this superhero thing, uh, you know, the burden of trying to hide, you, you know. The secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
¡Súper bien! ¿Y a ti cómo te va, Mike? Mejor que nunca. Bendito sea el fin de semana. Oigan, amigos, les presento a mis nuevos vecinos, Bob y Helen Smith. Helen, Bob, ella es Beth Anderson. Beth es corredora de valores en inversiones Philippine. Ah, corredora de valores. Suena muy interesante. Bueno, puede ser muy demandante, pero siendo sincera, me queda chico el puesto. ¿Tú a qué te dedicas, Helen? Soy ama de casa. Claro que solo tenemos a Violeta, pero también puede ser demandante. Oh, no, bebita bubu. Pero la maternidad es mucho Ay, más hermosa de lo que Ay, pensé ¿cómo que estás, querido? podría ser. <risa> eh, Bob, eh, quiero presentarte a, a eh... Dick Schaefer. Hola, Dick. Bob Smith. Y ella es mi esposa, Helen. Mucho gusto, Helen. Hola, Dick. Dick piensa comprar la casa de la esquina. A todos nos encanta esa casa. Claro, todas las casas de la cuadra son iguales. <risa> <risa> Mucho gusto, Dick. Bob, ¿me das una mano cortando los bisteces? Claro. <risa> ¿Desperdiciar mis mejores años persiguiendo una manada de niños mocosos? No, gracias. ¿Cómo crees? Para nada. Yo quiero hacer algo con mi vida. Espera un segundo. ¿Crees que criar una familia es nada? Bueno, está bien, si no puedes con cosas más substanciales. ¿Tienes alguna idea de la cantidad de sufrimiento que se evitaría si más personas fueran buenos padres? Yo... Uh, uh, ¿Qué es más importante que uh, eso? Sí, uh, ¿Qué trabajo? Uh, ¿Trabajar salvando vidas? Uh, ¿Eso es importante? Uh, ¿Sí? ¿Qué tal arriesgar mi vida? Uh, ¿Qué bueno. tal enfrentarte al mal todos uh, los días por años para que gente como tú pueda dormir tranquila y segura? Uh, ¿Consideras un trabajo así substancial? Uh, sí, yo uh, creo que sí, sí. Pues yo dejé ese trabajo por mi nueva carrera, formar una familia. Ni siquiera sabes dónde está el hospital, ¿verdad? No. ¿Y tú? ¿Se habrán dado cuenta? Qué pena, cielo. Ya sé lo que significa. Ay, unos meses con vendajes, después cicatrices falsas. Bueno, queríamos ser normales. ¿En serio? Sí, creo que lo encontré. Cielo. Ya oí. ¿Un ladrón? No sé. ¿Y? Eh, ya voy, ya voy. Despiértate y ponte atento. Ya sabes que dormido eres sí, muy descuidado. Claro. Cielo, no lo lastimes, estamos empezando. Cielo, no rompas nada, ¿sí? Acabo de organizar la casa. Sí, ya sé. Por lo menos déjame disfrutarlo. No te muevas. ¿Qué tomaste? ¿La platería? Mi abuela nos la dio. ¡Ay, qué dientes tan grandes tiene la abuela! Síndrome. No te hagas el sorprendido, increíble. O digo, señor Smith, 
¿No creíste que una nueva vida te absolvería de la pasada, o sí? Debiste saber que volvería para saldar cuentas y lo mejor es que... Ni siquiera saben que ya me escapé. Volverás antes de que lo sepan. Es genial, ¿eh? Es algo en lo que estaba trabajando cuando me mandaste a la casa de la risa. Pero las buenas ideas... No pasan de moda, así que nos aquí. Y no te molestes en pedir ayuda, corazón. Corté el teléfono, solo vete, ¿sí? Creo que te hace falta remodelar, ¿no? Este lugar quedaría muy bien. Si lo abrieras. Así. Ah, me gusta así. ¿No te parece? Espacio, espacio. Creo que te dije que te fueras. No intentes ayudarlo, pequeña diablilla, y te puedes ir. No es tu culpa. No debiste involucrarte con un superhéroe. Oh, no. ¡No! ¿Elastic Girl? ¿Te casaste con Elastic Girl? ¡Oh, no! ¿Y tuvieron un bebé? ¡Es toda una familia de super! Creo que tengo el premio mayor. ¿Y tú? Tú rompiste la ley, Mr. Increíble. Sabes que los super no deben tener hijos. Déjalo. Cortó el teléfono, ¿recuerdas? ¿Huele a gas? ¡Sujétate! I remember in one of the earliest meetings I had with the sort of Pixar, they call it the Brain Trust, it's kind of a small group of other directors and story people that look at each other's films, they talked about what is the thing that's, that's worst about them going into hiding? Are they avoiding lawsuits or are they avoiding, you know, people coming after them? Villains coming after you that have a grudge against you, if they found out that, you, that Clark Kent was Superman and could track Clark Kent down to his home with his wife and kids, um, that's dramatic. That's much more visceral. Um, the lawsuit thing is what I always had pitched because to me that's a very mundane thing to bring down a superhero, which is kind of the, the whole 
vibe of this film is, is the mundane and the fantastic, you know. But I recognize that the other one had a visceral uh, value. So I came up with this uh, syndrome character, and the thing that was interesting about it was that everyone, uh, when we did this sequence, responded to Syndrome much more than the villain that had been a part of my original pitch, which was this Zarek character. Right. We ended up going back to my original pitch, but the thing that we got out of it that was valuable was the villain. Who's super now? Huh. I'm Syndrome, your nemesis at it. Syndrome. <laughs> Don't act surprised, Incredible. I mean, Mr. Smith. I loved him invading their house. The idea of him showing up at the end of the film in the house was always in my original pitch. But the moment that I miss is using Bob as a battering ram to wreck his own home. We took that moment and translated and it, into the film, but it just doesn't have that same It's in there, but it's symbolic not symbolic impact no, no. as we did in the home and, and house. And, and the moment that I miss most of all is him having the mom and dad frozen in the ray and hearing the sound of the baby and going <coughs> and moving down the hall towards the baby's room yeah. with mom and dad floating in the air and they're unable to do anything about that. I think we made the right decision in terms of what's in the movie, what the movie is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we made a mistake but I miss those aspects of this moment. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a particular feeling that I got from that, that that we don't have that feeling. We have a lot of good feelings in the movie, but we don't have that specific one, and I kind of wish that we did. Snug was actually in the original pitch, right. and the idea was that I wanted to know that the villains are serious and that if you get caught in their crossfire, there's, there's gonna be a price paid. So uh, I had a friend, a Snug Porter was his name, and he was a friend of Helen's from the old days, and the idea was that um, he took her to her missions. He was her pilot, that was the original idea. And for those superheroes who can't fly. For those superheroes who can't fly they and have to, to go there. to different parts right. of the world, you gotta right. be, yeah, you gotta be taken and you're and dropped and all that stuff. Snug, I'm calling in a solid Joe, me. <laughs> About time. What's it been? Uh, 15 years? <laughs> I was starting to get comfortable. <laughs> what do you need? A jet. What can you get that's fast? Let me think. So for the longest time, Snug flew the plane. And um, the problem with Snug is that you had to introduce him. You couldn't kill him right off the bat because then you don't feel anything. Right. So then you had to commit to giving him screen time. And the more screen time you gave to him to, to make you care about him so right. that he was painful when he died, the more time you're eating up in the movie. I haven't asked. And I appreciate it. Old friends don't need to. No. Yeah. Because they trust each other. That's right. All those missions we flew, it's unspoken. Absolutely. Fly you to some curiously uncharted island without even wondering why. You are true blue. That's the kind of guy I am. I love that about you. Because I'd fly you anywhere. I know you would. Yeah, even if you weren't having marriage problems. Snug! Is it bad? I don't know. What's your instinct tell you? Prepare for the worst. Yeah, I'd trust it. Fairly early on, uh, it was suggested that you make Helen the pilot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in fact, I think that was John's suggestion, mm -hmm. is, is make Helen, and I, like, you know, I've thought of that, and no, I'm not gonna make Helen the pilot because Helen can't die, and, and somebody, somebody's gotta die and pay a price, and John would go, okay, you know, it's your movie, you know, da da da, bat not, but I'm telling you, you know. And, and so I fought it and fought it and fought it, and pretty soon, just down in the editing room, you know, I gotta get it down, and I am looking for cuts, and I know, and it's and and it's the worst when you when you want something, but you know you just got no leg to stand on. Right. And it happened on Iron Giant too. It did. It did. Uh, uh, there were certain things that I had to let go of that I didn't want to let go of, and for about a week, it's like expelling a, 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 a what are those painful 
things, and I've never had one. What, what are they? Kidney stone. Kidney, Kidney stone. stone. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was like for me emotionally because I didn't want to let go of this, and you know, I know that I have to, and <laughs> But once we got it out, it not only saved us screen time, which we needed for things that were more important, but it enabled us to make Helen the pilot, which I think amped up Missile Lock mm -hmm. because now she's in charge of her family. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy with yeah, that one sequence. One of the most intense sequences in the movie, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and very I think powerful. that it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't as intense when it was, it was snug. snug right? Yeah. No es cierto. Voy a quejarme de esto. No pueden estar probando sus armas. Torre de Isla, India Golf 99 transmite sin respuesta. Desistan, cambio, desistan. Agustino, diles que es un error. ¿Qué crees que estoy haciendo? ¡Deténganse! ¡India Golf 99 bajo ataque! ¡Amigos a unos 5 millas al sur! ¡Desistan! ¡Desistan! ¡Hay que hacer algo! ¡Vi! Sí. Tienes que poner un campo de fuerza alrededor del Pero avión. Pero dijiste que no debemos usar nuestros poderes. ¿Sabes lo que dije? Escucha bien lo que digo ahora. ¡Desistan! ¡Desistan! ¡Mamá! ¡Violeta! ¡Aborten! ¡Aborten! ¡Mujer y niños a bordo! ¡Repito! ¡Hay niños a bordo! ¡Pon un campo en nosotros Pero ya! ¡Pero nunca he hecho uno de ese tamaño! ¡Violeta, hazlo ya! ¡Aborten! ¡Aborten! ¡Permanezcan juntos! ¡Mamá! 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 ¡Cálmense! ¡Cálmense! ¡Mamá! Escuchen lo que no hay que hacer. No entren en pánico y no tengan... ¡Cuidado! a morir. Ahora, par de llorones, se calman o les prometo que los castigo por un mes. ¿Entendido? ¿Qué le pasó al piloto? This was a strange sequence because it wasn't like a schematic thing. It was more like an emotional thing, like this needs some moment. We need to right. see the bad guys but see them in an Im impersonal way mm -hmm. because that makes them even more bad in a way. Right. But uh, so the idea was that we, um, the ship would go down and we would cut to Bob hearing these things take off and so that you also connected it with Bob. But the idea that you show them coming out over the wreckage almost like vultures. I mean, when we talked about designing these things, we wanted to make them kind of mm -hmm. like uh, a predatory, uh, birds, mm -hmm. carrion birds, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the idea was that you would show them going over the debris field on the water very dispassionately and just saying, no survivors, da 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 da. Debris field all clear, no survivors. But uh, having them get, form themselves into the raft and start heading for the island and then having to stop while these guys came over mm -hmm. them. Structure-wise, I, I understood perfectly that it, it, it was a bumpy structure. But it always felt right to me emotionally, and I was sorry to see it go. But when, it, when we lost it, we lost one of my favorite shots in the movie, which was 
and the family hiding underwater as these vipers went over. Right. But when we took it off the um, plate of everybody, uh, you know, so many people were relieved because we had underwater hair simulation and all this stuff that's hard to do. Right. And it's like you could just feel the, the beast of the Incredibles go, <sighs> when, when that was taken out. But we even animated one scene in it. Yes, honey. W wait a minute, stop. Are you saying that Dad is working for the bad guys? Of course not. Then what's going on? We're gonna find out. In my ideal version, I would have that scene back. y haga un barrido. Cambio. Viper 1, Viper 2. Revisión negativa. No hay nada. Viper 2 se dirige a zona de explosión. Viper 1 reportando. Zona de explosión sin novedad. No hay sobrevivientes. Regresen a la base. Oigan, oigan, esperen, alto. ¿Estás diciendo que papá trabaja para los malos ahora? Claro que no. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que sucede? Es lo que quiero saber. The idea was that you're showing a guy who is frustrated that he can't do more and that his instinct is to um, confront crime and to intervene on behalf of, of protecting, you know, the citizenry. And he's in this job where he can barely help people through forms and... and, and the red tape red of this tape. industry. Yeah. Right. So the idea was to do something physical, have him see trouble almost, you know, that the cops can't handle, handle it. And then just be going, hey, we're all one part of the team and having the cops not see it that way and like, get back in your car, sir. And him actually getting angry at the cops for not being grateful that he's helped them. I think that it was a good scene, but I also think that we had other scenes that were doing that job. Right. And it's, it's one of those things that you do in an early draft right. that you realize that you have other, you, you're carrying that weight in other places. Right. <laughs> Qué bien. Oye, oye, oye. ¿Tienes mucha prisa? Oh. Oh. ¿Qué tenemos aquí? Puedes evitar a la policía, pero... Hola, oficiales. Miren lo que Asunto encontré. oficial, señor. Por favor, regrese a su vehículo. No, vine solo a ayudar, pero... Regrese a su vehículo, señor. Ahora. Oiga, escuche un segundo. ¿Algún problema, Ken? Señor. ¡Ya se está moviendo el tránsito! ¡Métete a tu auto y avanza! ¿Qué esperas? No.
Helen is suspicious that Bob, their marriage, infidelity, comes together in this one yeah. scene. Some people always felt that it w could work. Other people felt like, what the heck is this doing in a Pixar movie? And I felt like there was a tasteful way to, to handle it so that uh, it would be apparent to people who uh, uh, were older and not necessarily apparent to younger kids. And I think that even if you're doing a fantasy, you should try to bring in some some things about real life, you know? And it's um, not only um, good dramatically or, you know, but it's, kind of funny, you know? It's funny that we are fragile creatures and, and we screw up and, and um, we are insecure and to have superheroes that are uh, have these amazing abilities and yet have the same insecurities of, uh, uh, that all of us do is interesting to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was a little more direct than it is now. And, uh, it, it, you know, it had some lines that I'm sorry that we don't have, <laughs> but, but uh, 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 I think the version that we have now is, 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 is the best version. Hola. Hola. Muy alto. ¿Qué pasa, preciosa? No estaba tu traje. Tu traje de Mister Increíble. Cuando te fuiste, pasé el aspirador aquí. Lo mandé lavar. ¿Qué? ¿Hay algún problema? Oh, hay problemas, Bob. Hay problemas en tantos niveles. ¿Qué? Uno, que saques tu traje de Mister Increíble cuando se supone que nos escondemos. Nadie sospechó. Dije que era para una fiesta. Y dos, que quieres que te crea que justo antes de tu viaje de trabajo necesitas que limpien tu super traje. Un momento. ¿Estás diciéndome que tengo que justificar mi ropa sucia? Te digo que yo me encargo. Lavar es uno de Espera los muchos segundo. servicios que yo hago aquí. Si querías que lavaran tu traje... ¿Cuándo te empezó a gustar lavar? ¡Yo lavo la ropa aquí! ¿Qué está pasando? ¿Qué es esto? Parece un cabello. ¿De quién? No sé, la encargada. Es rubio. Es blanco. Es rubio platinado. Es blanco. Una cana. De la encargada. Esto no es una cana. ¿Por qué no me preguntas lo que quieres saber? ¿Me está haciendo infiel? Sí, yo y la viejita. La vi lavando la ropa y no me contuve. ¿Estás loca? Ay, me estaba sintiendo bien, para variar, con éxito. Y yo quería limpiar el traje y... Tenías que... Perdóname. No podías. Olvídalo. Sometimes dream sequences are okay. Mm -hmm. All I know is the, the, the first pain reliever you reach for, you know... <laughs> is when you're, the dream. Well, yeah, the <laughs> fantasy sequence or the dream sequence because basically you're looking for a way to say certain things. And the easiest way is to just say them in an abstract way that, that is not, you know, you don't have to work into your reality. And then right. have somebody go, eh, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's uh, exactly uh, what yeah. we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that exactly. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they can be good. Yes. They have been yes. good. There are yes. films that have them. I'm not saying that it's always a bad no. idea. But I'm saying that, that usually I'm learning that they are a, um, an early solution that you use as kind of a scotch tape measure to get an idea in a film that you don't have a better way of, of doing. Right. This one is like that, where she has some anxiety and, and it's uh, very sort of baldly stated and there's some funny ideas. But basically, I'm not sorry to be rid of it, you know. <laughs> It, we, that was one of the first ones to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Them. They always go first.